This is a new product from me, Tim. Tim calls this his AV driver. It's AV standing for audio video. It's basically an RGB and sound amplifier. I haven't installed it yet, but I will do so in this video. Firstly, I'll cut it open, get the board out. So that's the component side there, all surface mount and quite flat, very flush so that should help in fitting. On the other side is the is the solder side and there are many, many, many jumpers there. There could be uh, 20 or so jumpers, um, ground points, input, output points and there's also a dial there for audio level so you can adjust that as well. I think the main console that this board is targeted for is the PC Engine family of consoles. Um, it's not a purpose specific one like the N64 or NES RGB or the Atari 2600 RGB mod boards that are specific to those consoles. This one is more of a, a general purpose but it won't suit um, the aforementioned consoles, perhaps the early NTSC N64s but at this point um, I'm going to install it on a PC engine actually on the interface unit I've, um, I've got it in bits at the moment I actually might show you that shortly um, it's very customizable you can adjust the gain attenuation and bias with this board so I think once it's actually officially out or once more documentation becomes available, you'll see more uses for it. I wouldn't be surprised if you could use it on the Super Nintendo or the Mega Drive or various other consoles to bypass um, the RGB amplification of those consoles and use it with this board instead. So it's um, probably going to have some good uses once they're discovered and experimented upon. So anyway, I'm going to um, install this into this PC Engine interface board and we'll see how we go. So what I want to mod for RGB here more specifically is the interface unit at the back. Um, the CD-ROM unit plays no part in this at the moment. Now the PC engine could be modified to use the AV driver board if it was desired but in this case we'll go with the interface unit. Uh, I've already got this partly disassembled, but I may have to get a screwdriver out to pop that off. With the shell off, we can see the innards. It's actually quite a messy design. There's a lot of wires protruding around the place. You think NEC may have done a better job and incorporated the wires as traces into the PCB, perhaps, but anyway. It's more of their technical reasoning that did it this way, so it's not an issue, but anyhow, the area that we're going to concentrate on in this job is around here. Um, this connector connects directly to the PC Engine console, and you have access to quite a lot of uh, pins which, have, which carry um, video bus signals and system functions and address bus and data bus, but we want it for the audio and video, particularly the video capabilities of the console. We can get red, green, blue and sync through these pins um, they're not amplified, they're not strong enough on their own that's what the purpose of the AV driver board is and that's why we'll attach the red, green, blue and sync pins to the AV driver board and get our RGB that way so now I'm going to follow a chart or a picture that I've got loaded up on my computer in front of me right now I'm going to follow the chart in soldering all the jumpers on the board so that it will work with the PC engine. The chart is for the PC engine. There are no other diagrams for any other consoles or anything like that. The board here runs on either 5 volts or 3.3 volts but it is preferred according to the instructions to run it off 5 volts. There are a total of four video amplifiers plus a sync amplifier plus a left audio and right audio amplifier. 
all the video amplifiers must be set to the same as one another there is in this installation here a specific setting or there's a design incorporated into the board which is specific to the PC engine so you can see that the board is very PC engine orientated so that's actually it that now is actually soldered or configured jumper wise to work with the PC engine Just having a think of where I'm going to put the AV driver, you know, where am I going to put it in the system here? And I'm looking at this shielding um, on the PCB. And you call me paranoid, but just disconnect things. But this shielding here is like a, a thick paper in feel. It's very flexible, but it's actually metallic. It could be could be a thin bit of aluminium or, or tin or something and it is conductive and like it's just basically floating around like it doesn't really fasten down properly and that just doesn't sit well with me because you've got oodles of pins on the underside here and if this shielding just touches like look at it all all those chips there you're going to short things out so I don't know man I just don't like it but I've actually put insulation tape throughout the inside of it just as an extra precaution because now I'm all like I could put this thing back together and this could just get bent up a bit short it out so I mean like check out this shielding here this is from a top loading NES you know that's like tin that's that's gonna like it's pretty rigid it's gonna take a lot more force to bend it compared to this papery sort of cardy sort of feeling stuff so I don't know what's going on there but anyway just thought I'd interject with that as far as the placement of the AV driver board is concerned, I've decided I'm going to put it down here in the bottom of the casing. Even though there is a fair bit of room up in the top, I think I would prefer to pin it in down here somewhere. Now I'm going to have to insulate this board so it doesn't short out on anything because you've got more shielding in the bottom there and then you've got solder points on the bottom of the board. So I need to insulate this on both sides somehow and I've decided just as a, a quick fix right now to um, cut up an old gym membership card or a credit card you could use something like that I'm going to put a card on each side wrap that around with tape and then I'll probably use some double sided tape to hold it down in here you can easily shift these wires they've got plenty of length so they can detour a bit there like so and then I'll put um, might even cut that down to size a bit more so it fits a bit better and uh, I'll basically double sided tape that into the bottom there there'll be wires coming out joining to the port to the connection port to the PC engine and then there'll be wires traveling to wherever I decide to put the connector on the shell here for a SCAR cable I'll get onto that now I'm preparing to put the wires onto the port here for red green blue sink ground and 5 volts what I'm first going to do is Put a bit of solder on the joints just to make them bigger and easier to solder wires to. A little bit of increase that blobbiness aside, increase that size to give more more for the wire to grab and put it on. That one didn't really go on too well. It's alright. What we're gonna do here. Plus four volts. And then there's ground right there. Okay. Now I'll put some wires on. Here I've progressed with the wiring. I've got the wires from the pinouts here on the interface unit red, green, blue, sync, five volts, and ground traveling into the inputs of the AV driver board. And then from the outputs of the AV driver board, you have the final product signal wise. And this cable will run to this uh, 8 pinned in socket. This is like a Neo Geo style 8 pinned in, the common 8 pinned in. 
it's not the Mega Drive Commodore's U-shaped, horse-shaped, horse-shoe-shaped one. That's what the customer and I have decided on for the job. Because I'm going to wire, I've got to actually make up a SCART cable for this. Um, it'll be like Neo Geo style in its configuration. And then on the other end of the cable will be a SCART plug that will be wired for JP21 to ultimately go to an XRGB3. So that's our wiring done there. And what I'll do now is put on the um, plastic strips on each side and tape it up to keep it protected and just sit it inside the interface unit to see how it fits. Here's the AV board or AV driver wrapped up. There will be no shorting going on there and then I'll use double sided tape on that to pin it down or secure it into the bottom of the interface unit. There will be no movement there and I've also used cable ties on the wires just to keep things tidier and it also helps as a bit of strain relief if you pull on one wire it's sort of pulling on all of them and spreads the, the pulling force out a bit so things are less likely to break off I'm going to drill some holes into the plastic here into the plastic shell of the interface unit to mount the A pinned in on the side there firstly I'm just going to drill a pilot hole I'll change drill bits. Now I've equipped the drill with a step drill bit. I can't go to the full depth up near here around 14 mil because um, there's a screw boss inside in the way so I can't go all the way through but I'm just going to make this hole a bit larger and have to tighten that up in the in the vise a bit not too tight, I don't want to snap anything. So I've got the hole a bit bigger. I'll change um, step drill bit now. I've got a very big step drill on the end now. It gets to 14 mil very soon. Which is where I need the hole to be. Pretty close to 14 mil now. Probably spot on there. Let's see how the din fits in. Needs a little bit more. I'm going to hand file that out, I think, because the next step up on the drill is 16 mil from 14 to 16, and this needs to be about 14 and a half. So I'll just file it out by hand. Right, so I've done some filing. Look at that. Fits in perfect. The DIN socket. Now I'm going to drill a couple more holes for the screw holes here on each side. Then I can bolt that in. I've drilled one screw. I'm just going to drill another one. That needs a bit more. Job right. Now I'm wiring up the DIN connector. Putting each wire on. Like that. A bit of heat shrink. I finished building the cable for the PC Engine Interface Unit. On one end we've got the eight pinned in that will connect into the interface unit. This is the common eight pinned in style used in the Neo Geo and other things. It's not the U-shaped Commodore Sega style one. It's wired pretty much the same as the Neo Geo SCART cable except that this carries stereo sound through the DIN unlike the Neo Geo which is mono through the DIN. 
and on the other end there's a SCART plug but it is wired to JP21 standard not the Euro SCART standard cable is about 1.8 meters long I have sound on separate wires there carried through videos in the white cable and audio is in the grey cables there I don't have any JP21 displays on hand so I'm going to use a little short cable here this is um Japanese JP21 to Euroscart cable and I'll connect this to the cable as such and then that will go into the back of the Commodore monitor and we will test the mod and see how it goes now right I'm ready to turn on SCART cables in flash cards loading up Righto, so that works good. I've got Street Fighter in the memory still. Looking good. Yeah, it looks really good. Zoom in a bit. Turn it down a bit and finish the video off. So there's E-Tim's new AV driver board. It's been installed and appears to be successfully working. I'll let it run for a few hours just to make sure there's no bugs in there. Um, now, I don't know for a fact, but I highly suspect that the mod will remove any jailbar issues that the PC engine may have. I know it's very common for the PC Engine family of consoles to have jail bars and I suspect, I mean I would think that Tim, if it was possible to prevent the jail bars from occurring with his mod would have incorporated it into the design. So I think it's probably likely, although I can't say with absolute certainty that jail bars will be removed by the mod, but I, I haven't noticed any as such. So I think fingers crossed that it does clean them out because that will save having to open up the console and changing capacitors if it is the case so um, yeah um, uh, it's going to be interesting to see what the future holds what, what modders are going to use this mod for but if um, anyone out there needs to get their PC engines RGB modder just give us a message and I should be able to accommodate that so um, thank you once again for watching it probably a long video by the time I've actually put it together and everything but thank you once again stay tuned I've got more videos coming for other CRTs, new arrivals and other things that have sh showed up so thank you for watching and see you next time, bye